Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Yunus Abbas, and I'll be talking to you through the second uh, section of this presentation, which is about upgrading the air conditioning system to a higher ambient temperature on existing Navy ships. This is a basic representation of an HVAC system on a Navy ship. Cooling and dehumidification is achieved by using cooling coils, chilled water pumps, and a chilled water plant, which make up the chilled water system. The chilled water plant is cooled, uh, the condenser in the chilled water plant in, is cooled by seawater. 80% of the air, around 80% of the air uh, exhaust from the compartment is recirculated back to the air handling unit and then is mixed with fresh air at point M, as we can see in the psychometric chart. Then air flows through a cooling coil and drops in temperature, which is represented by the blue line in the psychometric chart. Air flows, air flows through the fan on the ducts where it gains around two and a half degrees, which is represented by the red line in the psychometric chart. Then air is supplied to the compartment, and as it flows through the compartment, it removes the heat <coughs> until and raises in temperature until it gets to the exhaust at point E. This is represented by the green line in the psychometric chart. The current ships we are talking about have been designed to an ambient temperature or an outdoor temperature of 31 degrees Celsius dry bulb and 27 degrees Celsius wet bulb. However, these ships are currently required to operate in areas with much higher ambient temperatures that can go up to 41 degrees dry bulb and 33.5 degrees wet bulb. From the psychometric chart, we can see that this condition is significantly higher. So what happens? We have a higher ambient temperature. That means we have more heat conducted through the structure of the ship, which would lead to a higher heat load in the compartment. Also, fresh air is supplied to the air handling units at a higher temperature. So we need, of course, more cooling. However, um, we will, the cooling system will struggle. So the first option uh, we are looking at here is to upgrade the system using the defense standards that we use for uh, designing these ships. And that specifies a uh, chilled water supply temperature of 6.5 and a return temperature of 13.5, giving us a delta T of 7 between the supply and the return. This psychometric chart shows the cooling process before uh, the system is upgraded to a higher ambient temperature. The other psychometric chart shows the process with a higher ambient temperature. If we look Compare the two psychometric charts, look at the green line. Because the conditions of air going through the compartment is the same, the enthalpy is the same, which means one unit of air will remove the same amount of heat. However, at higher ambient temperature, you have higher compartment heat loads. Therefore, you need more airflow through the compartment. And also, if you compare their blue line, which is the, the enthalpy of cooling the air that goes through the cooling coil, you can see that it significantly increases from 26 to 34. We've undertaken a study on a generic ATU, and by assuming a total heat load of 15% in the compartment, uh, the study have shown, has shown that the airflow through the compartment will have to increase by 18%. And the cooling capacity and chilled water flow rate will have to increase by 54%. So in order to upgrade this system, we have more airflow, which means we might need to upgrade 
the duct sizes in the whole of the ship. Also, because we need more cooling capacity and we have more airflow, we will have to upgrade the fan, the cooling coil, and of course the heaters, because the heaters are, are sized for heating and we have increased the airflow. So those also have to be upgraded. Up, we, we need to upgrade the chilled water flow rate, which therefore we need to upgrade the pumps and maybe the pipes if the critical velocities exceed the maximum. And of course, we need to upgrade the chiller. So that means if we need to, if we stick with the 6.5 degrees supply, we will have to upgrade the whole system, remove the whole HVAC system and replace it with a new one, which is costly. The second option we've looked at is to reduce the chilled water supply temperature. Legacy chilled water plants um, have the, the problem of uh, reducing the chilled water supply temperature. So if the chilled water, that's why 6.5 was, was set as, as a limit. So if you reduce it below that, you risk freezing the evaporator. However, modern chilled water plants can go down to 2.2 without the use of antifreeze supply temperature, which is very good. So in this example, we've looked at using a supply temperature of 4. So we can increase the delta T to 9.7 here. So this is a psychometric chart showing the previous process using a 6.5 supply chilled water temperature. The other one is, is for a lower supply temperature. So <coughs> comparing the two psychometric charts, if we look at the green line, which is the process of air going through the compartment, cooling the compartment, you can see that the enthalpy has increased here. So one unit of air, in this case, will remove more heat from the compartment. So that means we may get away without in increasing the chilled water, uh, the air flow rate. We've undertaken, uh, we've applied this temperature on the same ATU, and the results have shown that the airflow through the compartment will actually reduce by 6% from the original uh, design or the build design of the ship. And the cooling capacity will have to increase by 39% and the chilled water flow rate will stay the same. So this means instead of upgrading the ducting, upgrading the chilled water plants, upgrading the chillers and all the HUs, by using a, a lower chilled water temperature, we can get away by uh, just upgrading the chiller and maybe upgrading some cooling coils. In this option, we are looking at using air-to-air -air energy recovery units. Previously, the ship design conditions and the outdoor conditions were very close. So it wasn't viable to use uh, air-to-air energy recovery unit, units where you, you, where you actually cool the fresh air coming into the compartment using the exhaust. However, with a higher outdoor temperature, it's now viable to use a heat recovery unit. So in this psychometric chart, by using this uh, energy recovery unit, and that's a total energy recovery unit, so that will uh, transfer latent and sensible heat. So the outdoor condition or the air entering the AHU has significant condition has significantly reduced, reduced as we can see from the psychometric chart and this is a big saving in cooling capacity. Notice the green line, uh, notice the blue line, pardon me, it, it, that we can see that the enthalpy has significantly reduced. This is a reduction of 23% from the previous option, which is using a lower chilled water temperature without an air-to-air -air energy recovery unit. So <coughs> from this representation, we can see that in order to upgrade the ship you know, to cool at a higher ambient temperature, using the standard chilled water temperatures of 6.5 supply, 
we will have to upgrade the whole system. <coughs> However, by using a lower chilled water temperature supply, we can get away by only replacing the chiller and maybe some cooling coils. Also, using energy recovery units will improve the efficiency of the system. Thank you very much for your attention. And me and my, and my colleague, Robin, will welcome any questions. There will be more condensation, but the, uh, there is a comfort zone, and with lowering the temperature, will still be in the comfort zone. So we can obtain the same effective temperature, which is a combination of the humidity and the dry bulb temperature. So as the air is drier, you can accommodate comfort, human comfort, can accommodate hotter air. The radiator filters are only used when there's an attack, nuclear or biological attack. Yeah. Um, the size, the size is a bit constrained, but that's why they use uh, only coils for dehumidification. But uh, I mean, wheels uh, will assist, like uh, recovery, heat recovery wheels. They 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 will lower the humidification because the air coming in will uh, the humidity in the air com coming in will be transferred to the exhaust. The impact is that the humidity will be lower. The air will be in the temperature. Uh, the temperature will be lower supplied. Yeah. So, so maybe this, this temperature is below the one that will be comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. But supply of, if you lower it, it's currently about 17.5. It leaves the coil at 17.5. And if you lower it by two and a half, that means it's 12 and a half, which is acceptable, isn't it? Ashri, I think, sp specifies around 55 Fahrenheit, which is roughly 12 and a half degrees, which is still in the comfort zone. 
Again, the velocities leave the, of the air leaving the duct are very fast. So you don't get cold air uh, dropping because the air moves faster. It's not like uh, in cruise ships or other uh, places where there are restrictions on the noise, uh, higher restrictions on the noise of air. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.